Hello, I hope you're well. Welcome or welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's video, which is all about my most anticipated releases for the end of the year. I am so excited about these books that will undoubtedly end up on my Christmas wish list. Yes, I know, I know it's only September and I'm talking about Christmas, but December is gonna be here before you know it. Also, yes, I do know that I'm in my 30s and still create a wish list, but I've been told by my family that it helps them to know exactly what to get me for Christmas and my birthday, so I am more than happy to oblige. So why don't we talk about these books? As I said, they are the ones coming out basically between now and the end of 2021, which is ridiculous that we're already talking about the end of this year. So why don't we dive right in? So in this rare moment of clarity when preparing for this video, I actually put the books in order of publication. So we'll talk about the books that are coming out in October 1st. I will put all the publication dates in the description box for you along with the information on the books and the bookshop.org link. So. Firstly, October books. We have Ghosts by Edith Wharton, which is being published by the New York Review of Books, which is the same company that has published the Magda Zabo editions that I love so much. So it definitely piqued my interest that it was the same publisher. But I haven't read anything by Edith Wharton in its totality. I have an omnibus of three of her novels, but when I saw this short story collection on ghosts, I was interested. Like, I love the spooky season, but I'm particularly fond of ghosts. Like, I'm a scary cat. Like, I can't do scary things, but ghosts, I'm okay with. Like, it's a guilty pleasure for me to watch those stupid ghost hunter reality TV show things that are so cheesy and I can't watch them at night mind you but I eat them up. I do believe in ghosts. I have seen one but that's a story for another day but I just anything with ghosts I'm gonna be into and so the short story collection by Edith Wharton definitely got my attention very easily but basically all I needed to know about the book was that it was going to be about ghosts and I was sold. So this is a book that I definitely want to get my hands on and it's obviously being published in October because spooky season. So it makes sense. The next title is The Death of Jane Lawrence by Caitlin Starling. And this is one of those situations where the buzzwords and the comp titles for the marketing got me. It was described as gothic, which sold, and then it was also compared to Rebecca, which was also a huge selling point for me. However, I would say that I am slightly concerned that this book might be a little too scary for a scaredy cat like myself, because it was also described as horror, and the other comp titles are like Crimson Peak and Shirley Jackson. And so I'm a little scared, to be sure. But the general premise of the book does sound interesting. It's about this woman who decides that a marriage of convenience is the way to go so that she continue to, can continue to have her independence and do her work. And she finds someone who will agree, but his like caveat is basically that she can't go to his like ancestral home. This like crumbling manner sort thing sort of thing but obviously she ends up going there for whatever reason and shit hits the fan that's all that's all I know because obviously I haven't read it but I might try to be brave I might try to read it and like see if I can actually sleep at night odds are I probably wouldn't but there's definitely something about this this that is really, really appealing to me. The next book is The Days of Afrikite by Asali Solomon. And this is a contemporary fiction that's set, I think, not long after Obama is elected president. 
and it's about these two women in middle age who knew each other in college and have kind of lost touch with one another and then eventually bump into each other in a drugstore and it seems about to be about both of these women kind of finding themselves and finding each other which makes me think that there is like a romance element going on in here but I do like the fact that this book has characters in middle age because I do think that there is a lack of those stories in literature in general and it's something I'm working on for a video. So this is really interesting to me and yeah that's, that's, that's all I got. It's not my usual type of book because it is more contemporary fiction but there are other elements of it that I've described that really appeal to me. The next book is Daughters of a Dead Empire by Carolyn Tara O'Neill and thank you to Noelle for putting this on my radar because I would have completely missed it because it is a YA title and I don't read that much YA. It has to kind of be an extraordinary circumstance for me to be drawn to those stories, but I am definitely drawn to this one. It is described as an alternate history and it's set during the Russian Revolution. It is also a retelling of the story of Anastasia. And everyone who watches my channel knows how much I love Russia, how much I love Russian literature, Russian history, novels set in Russia, so this is really my cup of tea. But like my love of Russia started with the unfortunate romanti romanticization of what happened to Tsar Nicholas and his family during the Russian Revolution, the story of like Anastasia, could she have escaped her family's execution? and be alive somewhere like that story that myth that legend was what got me interested in the Romanovs originally so I am definitely interested in reading this retelling of it and this alternate history so thank you Noelle for putting this on my radar okay moving right along to books published in November the first one being Learwife by J.R. Thorpe and oh my word people friends you have no idea how excited I am about this book you have no idea it is inspired by King Lear the Shakespearean play but it's about King Lear's wife who is apparently been sent off to a nunnery and her name kind of forgotten and erased and I think the book picks up after King Lear has died and after his daughters are well if you've read the play you know what happens but so it's about King Lear's wife I am so excited about this book I don't really need to know more about it I'm gonna get it this is a book that is most definitely ending up on my Christmas wish list because first of all the cover is just beautiful but also as like an English lit nerd I'm so excited like how did this not exist until now so so excited so yes that will hopefully be a book that I get my hands on very very soon the next book is one that is completely different in tone. It's Never Fall for Your Fiance by Virginia Heath. Now I've been exploring the romance genre more widely this year. I can safely say that I do enjoy some books in the romance genre and I'm particularly drawn to the historical romance subgenre. Surprise, surprise. Everything on this channel ends up going back to history. What can I say? But I do know with historical romance that I like Victorian romances, but I've only read one kind of mediocre Regency romance, so I was interested in giving the time period another try with this one, which is also like a fake dating trope, um, which 
is something that I'm reading with the Danny Brown book right now and actually really enjoying so I figured why not give it a try here in this Regency setting but essentially this young man I believe he's an Earl um, has a very meddlesome mother which I feel like should be another trope and essentially his mother is trying to get him married ASAP but she has up until this point been overseas so kind of out of sight out of mind he's been able to tell her that he has a fiance and just kind of keep her off the scent but mama's coming home and now he has a big problem so he has to find a fake fiance because he's basically been lying to his mother about the existence of a fiance this entire time and it sounds like it could be very cute and very fun and I figured why not give it a try. So as I said, very different in tone from what I expect Lear, Lear Wife to be. And then we have The Four Humors by Mina Shekin, which is set in modern day Turkey. And the main character just sounds really quirky. And I have a special place in my heart for quirky characters. But essentially this young woman is like 21 and she's going to Turkey to care for her grandmother, to visit her, her father's grave, and to study for the MCATs. But while she's in Turkey, she basically starts self-diagnosing her chronic illness using the four humors, like that ancient medical like hypothesis or theory. And that's just really quirky, like using something hundreds of years old that has gone out of use to diagnose yourself. I'm intrigued. I am really curious about what makes her decide to do that, but also what is she? How is she? Like so many questions, but as like someone who studied English Lit, you heard about the humors all the time in literature, also in history. I heard a lot about it thanks to my friends who were studying like the history of medicine, so I heard lots about the four humors. So there is something really appealing about this storyline that I want to explore. And the last book in November is probably one of my most anticipated books of 2021, and you can probably guess what it is. Um, but I have never been more excited for a book release, nor have I ever put as much effort into a book release. I'm talking about Go Tell the Bees That I Am Gone by Diana Gabaldon, which is book nine in the Outlander series, and I say that I am putting in a ton of work because I am currently trying to read the other eight books that have so far been published in the series in time to read book nine. I am currently a good chunk of the way through book four with September being my month to read three of the Outlander books and it's a lot of work. In September alone it's like 4,000 pages of Outlander. So I'm putting in my time to get to this book. I honestly have not looked into what this book is about because I don't want to spoil it because I've been watching the TV show so I know what happens in the books up to a point but I've basically stopped reading the back covers of these books because I know at some point it's going to pass where the show has left off and I don't want to know. I know that some of these books have been published like a decade or more ago but I don't want to know. I don't want to spoil it so I honestly have no idea where book nine picks up but I am very very excited about reading more about Jamie and Claire. I also love the fact that in these later books they are both mature adults. I think that both of them end up being in their 50s and 60s by the end of the series so I do like that aspect of the books as well. But yes, so hyped about this book. So hyped. 
And now on to the two books that are being published in December, and they both happen to be nonfiction. The first of which is Sea State by Tabitha Lasley, I believe, and it is a memoir. And the book is about this journalist who ends up moving to Aberdeen in Scotland because she wants to pursue this book idea about writing about oil rigs, in particular the men on oil rigs, because she wants to know what happens when men are in a situation where there are no women around. But sort of there seems to be this moment in time in which the journalist gets perhaps a little too close to the subjects in which she's writing about, in particular one man. I think there's a romance element here, but this is a book that I'm just really interested in. I know next to nothing about oil rigs, like zero, absolutely nothing, but I do enjoy the fact that it is set in Scotland, or at least off the shores of Scotland, and it does just sound really interesting and compelling, and I personally would love to know what happens when men are in a society where women aren't there. So I am very intrigued by this book, like super intrigued. And it also has a really interesting cover. I'm, I'm a sucker for this cover and I do recognize that I'm being drawn more and more to memoirs recently, so I just figured I'd lean into it with this one. And the last book is Garbo by Robert Gottlieb, and this is a biography on Greta Garbo, the um, classic film star who is like such an enigma to many. She retired from film at like 36, so she was only a few years older than me, only having done like 24 movies or something like that, but she continued to be this draw and obsession for people like even decades after her last film had like screened. And so as someone who is really into classic cinema, who has always been fascinated but that by that time period in like movies and movie making, this just feels like a book that's going to be really enjoyable. I do have a few books that are similar about, about other individuals during that time period. I have the one on Alfred Hitchcock that I still need to read. Um, I had one on Liz Taylor that I read years ago. I have this, I want to say it's almost like a encyclopedia, I guess would be the word, of classic film stars. One that's focused on actors and one that's focused on actresses that I refer to time and time again. It's just a period in time that I'm really interested in, and Greta Garbo is this fascinating person from that time period, and I've seen so many of her 24 movies that I do think that I will really enjoy this quite a bit. So this one for sure will end up on my Christmas list as well, and since it comes out just before the holidays, it's perfect for that, if I do say so myself. <laughs> so yeah, those are 10 of my most anticipated releases for the rest of 2021. There are some on here that just seem like they're going to be gems, and I am so, so excited to get my hands on them. And hopefully you found a few to add to your TBR as well. Um, but if you have any books that you're highly anticipating in the last few months of the year, certainly leave them in the comment section below. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, comment and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye!